it seems as though we kind of missed the boat on showing you how to do the rim light in the last video and it's really on me because if four people didn't get it it's not really you it's probably me so the key about the rim light is to get it above and behind the subject when you have this forward looking light it's not a rim light it's just frontal lighting but if I'm turned around here and when I have the light above me you can see that it creates a halo and that's what we're going to try to get with this dog shot is uh, the light from above and behind the subject all right let's try this so I'm I've set up a couple of little flashlights and I'm going to attempt to do this with my dog uh, as the model and if you just uh, look over here I've got one flashlight set up on this mantle right here and then another one set up uh, just sitting on a lamp shade and then they both kind of intersect right here Sherlock come on all right come here you can smell this all right come over here sit sit up sit up all right, you just stay, stay right there, stay right there. Huh, not, not good, not good rim light. Why not? I got to re-aim these lights. And it has to be tipped down. So come on closer here so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a glove here uh, placed right here, and then I'm tipping tipping it down like that okay and you can see that this is going to create a pretty good rim light uh, hopefully we'll get it on the dog right, can you see my hand in the shot okay okay so you know about the treat you come here sit, sit right here come on forward and sit stay right there that looks very good doggy Stay right there. Oh yeah. Stay. Hey. Hey. Good. Okay, you can stop. Now, something that could make the placement of these little lamps a whole lot easier, which I didn't use in the previous video because I don't want to have you all go out and buy more stuff, but there's these uh, little rubber clamps that uh, William has told me about, so I ordered some, and they have a little screw at the hole on the bottom, and then uh, they, I've been using these clamps for years. I just bought a couple of more. They're very, very sturdy clamp and they'll go on to doors and all kinds of things. And they have this gimbal on the top that you can rotate and uh, place any way you want. So let me tighten that down just for a second. And then I'm going to screw this into the top of here you know to get a nice spotlight uh in the past i mean i am a fanatic collector of uh spotlights and lamps hollywood quality spotlights and i have found that believe it or not uh getting these kind of uh these kind of lamps uh produce a really good nice soft edge spot and they're they're almost as good as what's called a inky dinky a very small light uh, that's was is still used a lot in cinematography uh, but this thing here you know I mean you've got a, a basically a $12 uh, flashlight and then these clamps are two for six dollars and this clamp uh, I think is about eight bucks I'm not sure I'll put the link 
uh, in the email for you. And this, so this, this setup can be very, very useful. Uh, you don't have to have it, but when you want to do these quick shots and use the flashlight, you can't go wrong with this kind of setup. And this may be all the lighting you'll have to buy uh, for you know, short filmmaking and the assignments in this class. But uh, I don't want to have you run out and get it if you don't really need it. It's just a nice accessory. Now, another really great accessory that you don't have to get for this class, but if you take the beginning class, it is required. And it's um, a set of these close-up filters. And they sell for about between $12 and $20, depending on what brand you get. I find that uh, all the brands are the same, so I just <laughs> get the cheapest one. Vivitar is usually one of the least expensive. They come in a little pouch like this, and um, they have four uh, strengths. And now, how do you know where you're getting the right one? Because all of them are the same strength. They come one, two, four, and ten times magnification. This is the number four. It's, you know, it's pretty, pretty strong. But how do I know how, what uh, size I use? Well, I've got a Nikon lens here. I'm going to take the cap off and then I'm going to look inside and you're going to see right here that it's going to show 52 millimeters. And that is how you tell whether it is the right size that you need. Okay? And it's, there it is. Make sure that you are getting the right size filter for the lens that's on your camera. Every model camera is different. And then you can just order this set of four um, close-up filters and you'll be set. I tell you where they'll be useful is in future assignments when you have a cutaway uh, in your picture story and you want to show a close-up. Uh, and they're also good for all kinds of macro work. Uh, they're not the highest quality. They're not like a macro lens that you'd pay $500 for, but they do a very, very good job. And for the price, I think they're one of the best uh, investments that you can make in uh, an accessory uh, for digital photography.